Good morning. Uh, today we're going to do this beautiful, uh, this is the Ipswich B&B on High Street. Beautiful building. Nice place, a nice place to have breakfast. Okay, so it's all sketched in. You've got to do a detailed sketch of it so you know where the light is here. Beautiful light hitting this uh, building from that uh, speckled from the tree in front. All right, I'm going to start with a wash of raw sienna over the shadowed areas of the building. Wherever the shadows are, I'm just going to put this very light coat of raw sienna to give it a couple of reasons. One will give it a nice glow uh, under the shadow, and it also it's helping me to establish the shape of the shadow where it is and make myself familiar with it uh, as I go along and paint. It's telling me what I can leave and not leave. There's a flag waving in the light there. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so that's basically the shadow. You can see it, the beautiful light there. Wonderful tree. All right, so I'm dropping a, a ultramarine blue on top of that. Uh, it has a little tint of rose in it. You can hardly see it in the video, but I do have a little touch of rose in that. Let the paint do the work here. You know, just drop it. Let the paint run. Keep a nice incline on your paper so that the, it starts coming down all the time. Always have that incline. It's a major help for you in, in painting with watercolor. It helps you. I, I use a little uh, Windsor blue here phthalo blue, uh, just to get a little brighter. Let It's good to mix up your blues in the shadows, you know, it's really, uh, really makes a nice variety. All right, I'm throwing it because this is the shadow from the tree. I'm just, I want to leave some nice lights and give that effect of, of thrown light, you know, of shadow being, being thrown onto the wall. All right, so there's the shape of my shadow essentially right there. Just cleaning that up a little bit. All right, there's a sidewalk in front of that. So I'm just, while I'm here, I'm just taking some cadmium red uh, and just very light, just put a nice light wash of red uh, to act as bricks, you know, as the, as the sidewalks. And while I have it, I, there's, a, there's a chimney on top here. I'm gonna put that in. Uh, it's not, not too important, but what it, it, it gives it a nice balance against the, the other red. So you have, you know, red on the top and red on the bottom. <clears throat> All right, I'm putting the, uh, the roof lines in. It's just the gray, very light gray. I'm actually using the shadow co color. using the shadow color there with a little touch of raw sienna to gray it down. But you can see as I did that, it really helps uh, to develop the, the whole shape of the house with the shadow and where our light is gonna be and so forth. All right, I'm going in and putting in the uh, upper window. It's, it's a nice window, it's very significant because it's in the light. So I'm starting with some cobalt blue teal. It's nice because it adds a little color to this uh, otherwise uh, dreary color here of the sh just shadows. So, so I'm just putting in these windows. That's cobalt blue teal. And on the bottom, I'm using a little gray. You can put a drop of rose in the uh, cobalt blue teal. And that will give you, so this is the shape of our four windows. So I'm, I'm just going to go in and add a little dark on the top and bottom where the shadows are. And I'm taking my time with this because I want you to see. Uh, it's an important detail because it's, it's, it's in the light of the house. So there's a shadow underneath that uh, top window that reflects down on the wall. I mean, on the window, I'm sorry. So I'm putting in a dark, actually I'm just softening that shadow right now. Let it come down. I 
putting in some deep cobalt blue teal on the top of the window. That's nice. It gives it a, the effect that there's a shadow on the top. And when that dries, it's going to dry lighter, leaving the mullion of the window. All right, I'm putting a dark on each side of the mullion, and it gives the appearance that there's a drape in there that's open. So that's a nice little, uh, nice little detail. All right, I'm putting the door in here, and I'm going to speed up this whole little piece for you of the door with these little panes of glass around the door. They're a nice detail. Take your time with it. You know, just, you'll see right here, there's seven or eight little panes of glass across the top, the top light, and... Let's use a nice flat brush, pop them in. Don't get impatient with this stuff. These details are important. You know, there's, there's a several, uh, seven or eight across the top and then there's five down on each side. And they're a nice detail to the house. This is a really nice uh, Victorian building. Okay, these are the steps. Those are the kicks boards on the steps. And I think there's seven or eight steps here, so get those in. All right, you can see the shape. You can see the house starting to form now. That top window really made a big difference in, along with the doorway. All right, there's some light bouncing up underneath this foyer, uh, the overhang there. And it's a, you know, the light comes down, hits the ground, and bounces up. And it gets caught underneath these these over overhangs. This is a over the doorway. Some beautiful dental work there. There's some uh, there's a uh, bay window here. And it has these tall thin windows on the sides, and then the big windows in the front. I left that space because the bottom window has a little more color in it and it shows that it's getting a little more light. So that's the other side of the dormer. So I'm just adding a little more color, a little more blue. It's getting a little more reflective light on the bottom. There's a couple of side windows on the side of this house as it turns away from us. All this is really nice because it helps to, you know, to give you the form of the house. You can see it's starting to form here very nicely. A couple of windows on the side. You, you know, no, you don't have to worry too much about it. Just pop them in. They just add a nice little balance to all these, these darks. And across the top, uh, under the, under the uh, ridge there, there's some beautiful dental work. So I'm just going to suggest that this is just raw sienna. That's a little dirty, but that's the raw sienna in between the dental work. And there's a couple of beautiful uh, uh, supports here carved uh, in. There's some dental work on the other side. Just going to suggest that and then you have uh, the reflective light is coming up and then it's it's going underneath that overhang as well so you can put that in and then join it to these to the dental work have it have it come down across the dental work there so it helps to make that a little more subtle you can see how nice that looks you know that nice that bouncing light All right in this corner in between the bay window and the doorway there's a lot of shadow from the tree, so I'm going to put that in now. Uh, and just bring it down a little more right there. That's just ultramarine blue. Again, it's just a tiny drop of ro rose in there. 
to make it a little bit more violet and gray down the blue. Okay, this is all in shadow. All right, this is all behind that tree. I'm just gonna soften that edge a little bit. That's all hidden behind the tree, but I wanted to just get some shadow in there. Right over here, there's a little bit of a cobalt blue teal on the on the on the stairway there. That little. All right, let's get this tree in. This is cobalt blue with a brilliant yellow, and I'm just working. You can see there's various shapes of you know really beautiful shapes in the, in these greens and uh, the light greens and the dark greens. If you look at them, uh, you'll see some really beautiful shapes. You don't want to lose them because that gives you the direction of light. It tells you that, you know, where the light's coming from and how it's hitting that tree and it forms the tree itself. So take a good look at these patterns of light here. You can see those darks and lights. It's just ultramarine, uh, and I use a little quin gold there with the ultramarine to bring that dark, bring that down. So I'm holding the patterns. I'm painting, painting the patterns of light and dark. The tree is all about the edges, you know. You identify the tree not by that big bulk of green, but by those edges, the leaves that are popping out, not only on the edge, uh, not only on the outside edge of the trees, but also between the dark and light greens. You know, there's some, you want to pay attention to that, that edge between the light and the dark. You, right there, you know, you have some, you have some leaves popping up and down and, you know, so work that work that edge nicely. Look at those patterns of light and dark. Okay, beautiful big dark tree here. Give it a little spray. Keep that keep those colors alive while you're working on them. You know you don't want them to dry up there. Okay, there's the edge. Keep those leaves popping out from the edge. You don't want any nice big lollipop trees or anything like that. You want to hold on to that. Hold on to those nice patterns of light. Pay attention to them where they are. Uh, you could take a towel here and just, you know, work the edges a little more. It gives it a nice pattern. Just touch it lightly. It'll lift off some of the pigment, but it will give you some nice sense of light on the trees. Just tap it and work that, work that nice pattern of light, you know, creates a beautiful texture. Okay, back to the darks. Yeah, just look up at the beautiful patterns, pay attention to them and try to hold on to them. I was going to speed this up for you, but uh, some of you mentioned that you wanted to see the details of this, so I'm leaving it all in here so you can watch me develop this tree. So you put in a big spot of dark and then go in and work the edge. Keep those edges moving around and dancing. All right, now we're underneath the tree, so it's, it's almost all dark here. So what I want to do is establish the shape. Just keep working that nice dark shape until I'm happy uh, with the shape. And then 
uh, work those edges, get those leaves popping out of the edges, the outside edge of that dark. Try to leave some holes in the tree, it's always nice. Just scumbling here with the brush, it's a dry brush, so just scumbling using the side of the brush to push that dark. Once I establish the shape, then I'll go in and work the edges. Okay, see, have those leaves popping out down below. Very, very nice effect. All right, what I want to do here is, you can see that that dark. It's it's a little too black for me. So, uh, what I want to do is go in and mix up a a, gr a really dark green, but have it push it towards the green. And when all I'm doing there is, if you use some uh, cobalt blue with the uh, Quinn Gold, see, I'm, I'm mixing up a, a different shade of green and I'm popping it into the black and that, that dark area I made, uh, it's still wet. If it isn't wet, you gotta you know, keep, it, keep it sprayed so that it's wet and it's gonna absorb all this color. So you don't want that big dark black because the black is opaque and creates almost this big dark hole in the painting. But add a little color to it like that and it really, really helps a lot, okay? Right, I'm putting in the foundation of the building and I'm, I'm tinting it towards the blue. So this is a ultramarine. With a little touch of quincienna, I think, to darken it and bring it down a little bit, gray it down so it's not a bright, bright blue. All right, there's a little drain pipe coming down that I'm leaving there. And that comes all the way across on the other side of the stairs. A little darker over here because the tree is casting this deep dark shadow. And I left a little, little tiny drop of white there just to indicate that there's a turn in the wall. And it's, it's just dawning on me that this is actually the end of the house. You know, it doesn't go all the way over to the right, so it just dawned on me that that's, <laughs> that's the end of the house. I have to watch that. But, all right, there's a, a beautiful bright green lawn there. It's gonna be in the shade, but I wanna put it in, and, and so a little bit of that green color will, be, will pop out. All right, so this is the end of the house, so I'm letting the lawn go back now. It's a little lighter as it gets back there, but. All right, so here's the shadow now. And, and this is a, a essentially green. It's the same dark green, ultramarine with some queen gold. All right, and it comes right down over that curb stone. And then in this corner we have the shadow of the house, and the shadow of the tree hitting the lawn. It's a little lighter as it comes out to the edge. And there's the drain pipe. Not important, but just a small detail. Gives it a little more of a homey look. There's the shadow, and the shadow is right on that curb stone as well. So you can see it needs more shadow on the, the building itself. And this is just ultramarine with a little drop of rose. So it's on the side, uh, and the railings are, are a little lighter. But the shadow is hitting the doorway and the porch and the stairway. I'm leaving a couple of pieces of light there underneath that overhang. All right, that's very effective. 
All right, I'm throwing some shadow on the sidewalk now, the tree. And this will help lead, you, lead the viewer into your painting. It's a little cast shadow from the tree. Um, this is the lightest side as it gets a little darker. I'll put that in, put that in later. But for now, I just want to see the shape of that shadow. So the shadow is hitting the sidewalk. i make it a little bit darker. I'm throwing some little cobalt blue into that and let it just mix, mix on its own. I'm going again on the edges of the, the dark tree here and light, but just some extra leaves popping out. It really helps to, to, to uh, identify this tree and to create a nice form with it. You know, you can see just a little bit. You don't have to overdo it, but, you know, just these little, little leaves popping out really help a lot. All right, over here you can see there's no, there's no bush, but I'm going to put a bush in the corner here. Uh, really just for balance. I feel like it needs something heavy over here to to offset that big tree. All right, this is the flag. Paint some red red stripes. It's kind of blowing in the wind here. Don't need all the stripes, but some of them enough to indicate. Okay, and then I'll add some ultramarine for the blue stars. And just put a little shadow in there in the curve where, it, where it's waving. Alright, there's a, there's a nice lantern uh, uh, hanging from the center of that of that uh, overhang on the porch, and it's a uh, it's hanging by a chain. So there's a little st stranded line there. These little details help. You know, it really helps to give you the character of the building, the house, and so forth. So it's always nice. Nice to pay attention to those details when you're doing it. They're fun to do, always fun to do. Little shadow on that uh, chimney up top there also adds, you know, it adds to the uh, effect of the light. Just that little piece of shadow on the chimney shows you which way the light is coming. And really nice effect. I'm taking a little tiny bit of white here. Uh, I wish I left a little white, a little more white underneath. But anyway, this is a little bit of white coming through the trees, more light. You know, it's kind of spotted, a spotted light, which is, which will add. You don't want to overdo it. Just give you the effect that there's a little bit of light coming through and touching the touching the building okay All right, I mixed another green kind of a middle uh, a middle tone uh, and I'm using that on the edges to bring us from the dark to the light green and it just helps with the turn of the tree so just add a little bit more there Gives you a little more detail on the tree. All right. Okay. And so finally, I'm just going to darken the shadow in the front. I, I feel like it needs to come down, especially up close there where the, it gets lighter as it gets away from the tree. But it's nice. So, okay. So there it is. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Please uh, subscribe 
and follow. And I will see you soon. Thank you.